We all know there are a million different ways to make a living, but on this show, we are curious about those businesses that you might not know about. We're going to take a deep dive every week and talk to a successful person in their field to learn about how they got their start and how they continue to make it in their space. Join me and learn more about the business of. Welcome to The Business Of, and today we are here at Gotham Greens talking to Viraj Puri, the co-founder and CEO, and we are going to be talking about the business of urban agriculture. So welcome to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Um, so you have had a career working in environmental issues, but no projects that really have been Farming. So how did you decide to do become an urban farmer and set up Gotham Greens? It was definitely a pretty <laughs> convoluted path. I did not certainly did not grow up uh, grow up thinking I was going to become a, a farmer, let alone an urban <laughs> farmer. But I, as you mentioned, I've always been drawn to environmental issues you know, from a young age. I've always been interested in the outdoors and conservation. A lot of my hobbies and recreational pursuits, uh, you know, put me in the outdoors and through college in the early part of my career, I was really drawn to clean technology. So I spent um, some time working with renewable energy and green building and other sorts of environmental um, engineering systems. And it was while working at an engineering firm that I was first exposed to what's known as controlled environment agriculture. Okay. And uh, just over the course of my research, I just became, you know, really enamored with the technology and was uh, just really taken by the enormous impact that agriculture has on our natural world, particularly in terms of natural resource consumption. So agriculture, it feeds billions of mouths each day, right? It's such a vital part to human civilization, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's the largest consumer of land on the planet. It's the largest consumer of fresh water. It's the leading um, source of global water pollution and sort of the list goes on, right? So if we're really serious about climate change and the sort of uh, changing environment that we're in this world, then we really ought to be looking at agriculture. And this is just such a great use of applied technology that can check a lot of those boxes, use less land, use less water, um, and really leverage the technology piece which really spoke to me um, early in my career. So how did you come up with this idea to do it in such an urban setting? Like why urban environments? Yeah, so greenhouse agriculture um, has been around for a long time, right? And different forms of controlled environment agriculture date back um, decades, if not centuries, right? Um, but consumers weren't really aware of the technology and it wasn't really being deployed on a wide scale in the United States. And being a New Yorker and living in New York, it felt like a really great place to sort of showcase the technology. This is the nation's largest city, one of the most influential cities in the world. If we could do an urban project, it could really spread awareness of the issue. And uh, it, was, it was very challenging because, you know, New York City, one of the densest, uh, you know, metropolitan areas in the world, certainly one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world, you know, certainly in the country. And so it was challenging, all right, in our early days of forming the business plan. You know, we had this high conviction that greenhouse farming had this huge role to play, particularly given all the consumer interests around local eating and the popularity of farmers markets and farm to table restaurants. And it just seemed like um, this was a great um, form of agriculture. And if we could sort of do it in New York City, we could sort of really get positive media attention, public relations, and really just spread awareness on, on this type of farming. So we built our first greenhouse on a rooftop in Brooklyn, just a few blocks away from here, uh, with this gorgeous backdrop of the Manhattan skyline, and nice. got the you know front page article in the New York Times and all the rest of it, so it, it really served that purpose. But more importantly, retailers and uh, grocery stores and restaurants just were love the value proposition of being able to get farm fresh greens year round, 365 days of the year, as compared to product that typically they would be getting from California, 3,000 miles away, 4,000 miles away, or places even further away. Right, so it was a great place for us to build our proof of concept, really showcase the technology, and spread awareness on this amazing form of farming. Wow. So, and you're doing it on top of buildings instead of having it finding square footage for it within other warehouses or whatnot. Like, why is it on top of a building so important? Yeah, so we grow in greenhouses, so yeah. we utilize natural sunlight. Natural sunlight's really important for us yeah. to grow the crops and produce the photosynthesis that the plants need uh, to obviously uh, produce. And it's, it's, a, it's a lower um, 
energy proposition as well because we rely on natural sunlight. You are right, there are some forms of controlled environment farming that are grown in warehouses using artificial lights, which is just super interesting. The energy costs are still a little bit high, so for us, greenhouse farming uh, was the one that we selected. And our business has certainly evolved from these uh, urban rooftops. So we started off in New York and Chicago with these rooftops, but the demand for the product has really <laughs> exceeded our expectations. So it sort of made it necessary for us to build much larger land sites. So we're still very committed to being in and around the urban environment because that's um, where the consumers are that we need, to, we need to service. But our model looks a little bit different from this rooftop greenhouse in Brooklyn today where it's, you know, think 30, 40 acre land sites just on the edges of cities where we can still service uh, the urban populations with farm fresh greens. So you came up with this concept to do it in an urban area, you've expanded it, but in those early days, how did you come, like, how was that hustle to get this business plan off the ground? Certainly not for the faint of heart. <laughs> if I look back to everything we went through, it was, uh, it was a doozy for sure. I mean, uh, starting any business is hard, yeah. right? This was a business that did not really have a playbook, right? right. Um, no one had ever done something like this before practicing commercial scale agriculture in New York City, hadn't really been done before. Uh, everything was new territory for us. The real estate, the regulatory process, the permitting, getting insurance policies, getting our raw materials, employees. Very fortunate to have two business partners. Uh, we have very complementary skill sets, so looking at different aspects of the business. One is obviously um, really focused on plant sciences. She's a plant scientist and brings a lot of the knowledge on, on horticulture and engineering. Uh, my other partner is our CFO and brings the financial background in Acumen. My background is more in project management and, uh, and green building systems. So really complementary skill sets to put this all together. Uh, but it also made it really exciting, right? That's what motivated us was just the passion that we had. We had so much conviction in this idea. Uh, and fast forward 10, 11 years, the sector is now booming. You know, we've seen um, over $3 billion of venture capital and private equity investment go into controlled environment sector just in the last 24 months alone. Wow. Right? We've seen retailers from the largest ones, though, Whole Foods, like where we are today, yeah. the Amazons, um, Kroger, Albertsons, Walmart, Costco, um, literally triple, if not quadruple, the amount of indoor grown product that they're buying. And particularly in light of uh, COVID-19 and all the supply chain challenges that have been exposed, um, it's just become much more clear the benefits of farming much closer to consumers. And then if you layer in all the headwinds coming from the traditional agriculture industry, which is rooted in California, which is facing, you know, its 20th year of severe drought, labor issues, high cost of freight and logistics, um, it, you know, it's really gratifying and rewarding to see this crazy business plan that we came up with in a bar in Manhattan's East Village like 15 years ago has now really helped spawn not just an industry here in the U.S. but globally. Um, so it's it's our farms look a little bit different than and than the one that we're standing in, but but the mission remains the same, which is really to transform agriculture for the health of the planet, the health of people, the health of our cities. Um, so it's been it's been a wild but but really rewarding ride. So you guys have built these amazing greenhouses. Tell us a little bit about how they work and why they're so much better for the environment. Absolutely, so there's a lot of different technology in here. <laughs> I would say, to start off with, we're in an enclosed environment, right? So it's also colloquially known as indoor farming, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to outdoor farming. Right. So we can control the environment in here year round, regardless of the outdoor weather conditions. So uh, middle of summer here, it's obviously a little bit hot and humid, but uh, it's actually going to feel very similar even if you were to walk in in the middle of December or January. And that's by design, yeah. right? We want the plants to have very consistent, reliable conditions year round. So we have sensors located all over tracking the temperature, humidity, the light level, the CO2, oxygen. And then all that data that we collect in real time is sent to one of our computer control systems, which we've programmed to turn equipment on and off in the greenhouse to achieve the desired conditions we want, right? So we have fans, we have cooling systems, dehumidification systems, we have lights, we have heaters for the winter time, all these different you know, bells and whistles and these tools, right? So that's how we control the environment or the, uh, 
the shoot environment of the plant. And then on the root side, we're using a form of farming known as hydroponics. So there's no soil in this facility. We are dissolving uh, nutrients, mineral mm -hmm. nutrients, into the irrigation water, and that's providing all the uh, nutrients that the plant needs to grow, as well as, of course, the, uh, the water yeah. and, and, and the oxygen. And then we recirculate all the irrigation water for reuse. So we're drip irrigating and then collecting the irrigation water for reuse. So we can grow a mature head of lettuce using just one or two gallons of water compared to conventional outdoor farming they can use up to 40 gallons of water for a single head of lettuce. Wow. So the water savings are really staggering in a system like this. I don't think that's something that you think about when you're at the grocery store is how much water each individual item takes to produce. It's really shocking and I don't think, uh, I certainly <laughs> <laughs> don't think most people know uh, how much water goes into a single head of lettuce. And something like lettuce is 98% water anyway. Yeah. And it seems really crazy to be growing it in a place like California that has so much drought, <laughs> right? And you're just using all this water. And then you're shipping essentially that water across the country in a refrigerated truck, right? So we feel like this more decentralized network of farms uh, can really cut down on, on that long distance transportation. So we really focus uh, here at Gotham Greens on leafy greens. So here's a blend of about four or five different lettuce varieties. We've got some butter lettuce, which is also known as bib lettuce, which mm -hmm. is really soft. It's great for wraps and uh, even on sandwiches. And then we've got a couple of uh, curly varieties. Uh, this is a green leaf and a red leaf. Really good texture, it holds dressing really well. Uh, we also grow arugula, romaine lettuce, uh, different types of greens and reds. And we also have a lot of herbs. So we're growing a ton of basil in this greenhouse as well. Uh, basil is a highly perishable herb. It does not travel well. It does not store well. So growing it, growing it in close proximity to the market has been awesome. And it's one of the best selling uh, basils in the market today. So with the goal of Gotham Greens being to bring, you know, fresh produce to people so quickly, you know, what are some of, what's a gamble that you have taken that has been a learning opportunity that you weren't anticipating? Certainly, <laughs> many come to mind, yeah. right? I would say just the agriculture piece, right? Yeah. I mean, the, this is one of the most high-tech farms in the world, and certainly our new generation farms even more so. We have an enormous amount of technology here, and I think I probably underappreciated how hard it is to grow plants, right? These are, aren't widgets. These are living, breathing, <laughs> biological um, plants, and so they require a lot of care, um, despite us really controlling the environment. Um, it's certainly been challenging doing it in an urban area with the density, the traffic, uh, the high costs, right? Overall, the business, um, it's a profitable business and, and it's been working really well uh, given our proximity to market, right? So we were really, I think, correct with that thesis that, that even though we expected our cost of production to be higher than, say, open field agriculture in a much more rural area, um, given that we have a much shorter supply chain and we can bring that product to market much quicker, it's really reduced our distribution costs and provided the customer with a much fresher product. So, you know, some things have, have reinforced our thesis and some things have been wildly different. Um, so, conversely, what is something that you took a chance on that has paid off better than you thought? We know that plants aren't perfect, so that's always a, an interesting piece of it, but you know, something that has been a better, better than you anticipated? I think the national expansion was definitely a risk, right? It was a risky yeah. proposition to expand beyond our home base of New York City, right? The initial business plan was really centered on the long distance transportation from, say, California or places further afield to bring the product to the nation's largest market, which is the New York tri-state area, home to 25 million people, right? But given the early success we had in New York, we figured, well, there's probably a use case for people in Boston or the market in Chicago or Washington DC, so on and so forth. So we took our first gamble and went to the Chicago market and I'm really glad we did uh, because it, it, the whole concept, the business plan, the value proposition and brand has translated into that market and then based on that success, we went up into New England, the Mid-Atlantic, now we also have operations in, in uh, Colorado and so, lo and behold, we're now in California. All right. So if you really think about that initial <laughs> business plan, it was to get away from that long distance transportation. But what we found in the last 10 years is agriculture is changing and needs to change in, in, in a changing climate. And so the retailers in the market in California are also looking to advance different forms of farming. 
and we found a home in Northern California um, in partnership with the University of California, Davis. And the last place I thought that this business would make sense would be in California. Especially in Davis, which is farm country. Exactly. But just the research uh, opportunities we have, the workforce opportunities we have, and as I mentioned previously, the drought in California, some of the agricultural worker issues are really signaling that this form of agriculture has a really um, important role to play going forward. And now we've announced new plans to uh, open it in the South, in, in the Texas market, the South, and in, in the Georgia market for the Southeast. So I think that's really been a surprise about how well the, the business has translated to other markets. So we're gonna go on a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with more from Garage at Gotham Greens. So we're back with Barrage from Gotham Greens and let's talk a little bit more about the future of farming and where you see it going. Yeah, I certainly believe that indoor farming and different manifestations of what you're seeing here are going to be part of the future of farming. Mm -hmm. you know, this in and of itself will not be the future of farming, but certainly part of the mix, right? There's going to be no sort of silver bullet or panacea to address um, a growing population and, and dwindling natural resources, right? But for certain really highly perishable fruit and vegetable varieties such as lettuce, uh, different types of leafy greens, vine crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, pepper, certain berry varieties, um, I do believe that this is gonna become the dominant form of agriculture. I mean, for UN estimates, we're gonna be increasing the population to about 10 billion people by 2050, right? So that's additional 2 billion mouths to feed, um, and, and we are facing more climate-related uh, issues, right? Particularly in many of the world's highest food-producing regions. So this form of agriculture can use 95% less water than conventional farming, wow. right? So we recirculate all of our irrigation water for reuse, right? So we're using um, a, such a small fraction of the water. So as water becomes a more scarce resource in many parts of the world, again, believe that this form of farming will be more um, uh, more dominant, but broadly speaking in the agriculture sector, we're seeing so much innovation, right? We're seeing more use of data, we're seeing more use of artificial intelligence for, for crop decisions, we're seeing so much with um, uh, 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 blockchain technology for traceability, we're seeing so much research in genetics and seed varieties to produce more varieties that are more drought resistant or pest resistant. Um, so there's so much technology, CRISPR technology among others. And then we're also seeing so much downstream technology as well, just supply chain solutions to be able to get product to customers faster. We're seeing um, a lot of really interesting applications to extend the shelf life of fruits and vegetables to make them last longer so there's less waste in the system. So it's definitely a really exciting sector to be in and we're seeing so much investment, um, both really from technology investors, but also from governments and sovereign wealth funds who just see food security as national security issues. Are there ways that Gotham Greens is going to get into some of these other areas of the business, or do you think you guys will focus on you know, your core business and bringing more um, product to consumers closer to home? I think it's a combination. Yeah. We are really focused on executing what we do well uh, to create, create efficiencies. It's really tempting to go into different areas, but yeah. sometimes yeah, <laughs> it, it behooves us to stay focused. That being said, we are really part of an ecosystem, an academic ecosystem, um, uh, uh, more of an agri-tech, uh, ag-tech uh, ecosystem now, whether it's conferences, whether it's trade shows, whether it's in part of the investment community. So uh, we are also collaborating with folks overseas, either on just research and development, knowledge exchange. So it's definitely a global industry that we're a part of. And, um, but our focus today is really on our, on our products, getting more products to market, becoming a more national brand, and getting the Gotham Greens brand into more supermarkets around the country. Well, thank you so much, Raj. It has been great to have you and learn more about Gotham Greens.